Hello, welcome to the String Things Knitting Channel. My name is Mel and I'll be documenting my knitting journey here. I'll be sharing my projects, what I'm working on, the patterns I'm using, the yarn I'm buying, and hopefully everything else in between and whatever else comes up. I started my knitting journey late 2019 and I started off just with some simple swatches, practicing the mechanics, and then quickly moved on to my first garment, which was a cardigan. Then in February 2020, I found out I was pregnant. So I spent the next nine months working on a mix of baby items and anything I wanted to get done uh, before baby's arrival because at that time I was quite concerned about the lack of knitting time in the near future. And so once my daughter Darcy was born, I could not knit and for obvious reasons, but the break only lasted a couple of months and I was able to pick up the needles again. And I started off just uh, knitting while she slept or napped and you know what, I, I even knit while breastfeeding <laughs> and I'm actually uh, recording this video while she's sleeping so I'm continuing the trend of knitting when she sleeps. And in March of this past year, 2022, I became a stay-at-home mom and it's been really wonderful to continue being at home with my daughter but lately I've been craving a little something of my own, another creative avenue in addition to knitting itself. So here I am. <laughs> and so rather than me sitting here going through every single one of my past projects, I wanted to share just a few items that I'm most proud of that I've completed in the last couple years of my knitting. And these aren't even my favorite knits or even my most worn knits. But these are definitely items that made me want to keep on knitting. So let's get into it. Okay. Okay, this obviously very, very cute. And obviously made for my daughter, not me. I mean, could you imagine? <laughs> this is the very, very first baby item I knit for my daughter during the pandemic. It is the Kimono Nure Cardigan by Creativa Atelier. It is a free pattern online and it's just, when I saw it, I knew, I knew I had to knit this up. It is definitely beginner friendly, uh, so check it out if you are interested in it. It is mostly garter stitch, and there's just these cute little baubles on the front, and this little pom pom uh, string here to close up the top. But oh my god, it's so cute! And looking at it, I can't believe she was this tiny before. Oh my god. Ah, they grow fast. <laughs> um, so what was great about this project and why I'm proud of it, because not only was it my first baby knit, but it was my first time where I had to do like decreases, seaming, bobbles, there's a mix of stockinette, mix of garter stitch. So as a beginner, there was a lot going on, but it was totally doable and I enjoyed it so much, especially because it was such a quick knit. It only took me a few days of knitting at home in between emails and phone calls because I was working at home at the time. But oh my God, I love this. I love this. Um, definitely going to keep it as long as I can. It looks a little smushed right now because I, I literally just pulled it out of storage for this, but um, yeah, that's, that's my first baby item. <laughs> the next project I wanted to share, um, 
So I kind of went from zero to a hundred. So yes, there were some new techniques in the baby item, but I decided to dive right into color work and not just simple color work. I'm talking like stranded, intarsia, duplicate stitch, all of it. Um, so stranded color work. So this is like floats galore in here. Tarja. So that means I had multiple yarn balls going on. Um, there's a bit of duplicate stitch on the bottom here. But wow, this, this was a good challenge for me. And it really helped that this project is made out of bulky weight yarn so I got to use larger needles made the work go quicker and it was easier to manage all the yarn this is another free pattern and this one's from the website your inspirations um, and I had a lot of fun with this one choosing the colors so the original pattern sample is made in red and it's definitely supposed to be giving you the kind of Canadian northern vibes but I didn't want red I don't really wear red so I opted for green instead which I think is still very fitting especially for the west coast I've got some toggle buttons here because I did not want to attempt the zipper the pattern uh, says to add a zipper and there was no way I was gonna try to do that but really liked working this one up and this is something I finished before my daughter was born because you know thinking back about how tired I was I don't think this would have been something um to attempt postpartum <laughs> so lesson learned from this jacket well maybe I should also tell you I Okay, another proud thing about this one is that I hit gauge perfectly and blocked to the exact measurements for size extra small, small. But um, here, I'll try it on for you. And you can tell me. <laughs> and you will see exactly why I have some hesitations about it. So yes, oh no, my ring is stuck in the float. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, so I hit gauge perfectly and I blocked to the exact measurements. But my goodness, I'm not a size extra small, small, turns out, according to that pattern. So, like, look how short these sleeves are. Maybe that's an exaggeration. I'll relax. Relax. Um, so at the time, I mean, I was trying this on, sort of, but there weren't too many opportunities to really try it on because it's all seamed. But I was also pregnant with a belly at the time. So I just thought, maybe I'm just a little bigger. You know, the arms, maybe I've gained some weight. Definitely have a huge belly, so I could not close this at the time once I seamed it all up. So after my daughter was born, I tried it on. And yeah, that confirmed that it's way too small for me. I mean, like... I th yeah, I could close it. I could close it. And the length of it, because I really, after the initial block, I went back and tried to make it longer. But the sleeves, oh. And this is knit from the bottom up, like from the cuff up, so it, I don't know what. Yeah. So that's an unfortunate thing about it, but that did not make me feel like, oh, I'm never knitting again. If anything, it was motivation to 
keep knitting and make sure I measure myself and compare it to the pattern measurements. But nonetheless, still very proud of this project. And unfortunately, I cannot wear it. Well, I could wear it inside the house, but there's that. The last project I wanted to show you, I finished this in 2021. Let me just hold it up for you here. And uh, here, I'll model it for you. Just so you can actually really see what it is. Dun -dun -dun. Big sleeves. This is all brioche. And this is using, knit up using a uh, Lion Brand Woolies yarn. I believe the color is just Heather or Natural Heather, which I have a lot of. And so one nice thing about this project was that I was able to use yarn that I already have. But why am I proud of this project? Well, this is, okay, this is the trend. Another free pattern. But you know, free patterns are nice. Like, especially if you're learning and you're not quite sure if you're going to stick with knitting. Free patterns are really nice finds. Um, but this one's also another yarn inspirations pattern. It's called the Trinity Bellwoods Cardigan. And the pattern actually is made for... A cotton yarn so I made quite a different yarn uh, substitution for it I didn't want to make a cotton sweater or cardigan and I really wanted to use up some of the Woolies yarn that I have so I did a swatch and figured out my gauge and everything figured out what size to knit measured myself <laughs> God. and I think it worked out really well the Woolies yarn uh, resulted in a really nice squishy cozy cardigan which I love that's exactly what I wanted to achieve especially with this brioche stitch brioche was something once I learned about it I was really itching to try it out and I was so happy to find it in a cardigan so it is like a crop length big sleeves and it is warm and even though it's a Woolies, so which is a wool acrylic blend, it is quite warm. And it's definitely warm enough for the temperatures that we get here in Vancouver. And I'll show you the button band. Come in just a little bit closer. So at the time I was making this, Petite Knit had released her champagne cardigan. Or maybe I had just discovered it at that time. But I really liked the double knit button band that she did in that design. So I looked up her tutorial videos for that. And I did that on this sweater. Because in the pattern for this one, it actually instructs you to make a super long strip of knit one pro one. And sew it on afterwards, which... I was not interested in doing. I really like the technique that Petite, uh, Petite Knit uses and how the band is like attached and worked up as you go around the cardigan. So I really like that. And I really like how it turned out. It's very clean and it was okay doing the buttons. Although for some reason, when I was doing the buttonholes, going back and forth. I had some buttonholes that were, it's like I did too many or not enough rows on either side of the buttonhole. So I had to go back and redo a couple, but at least it wasn't like I was frogging a bunch of the sweater. So it was okay. But this one, this project, I actually do wear it a little bit. It's definitely has to be quite cold though and bad thing about it though is that because the sleeves are so big this doesn't fit under a jacket so it's definitely uh if it's really cold inside 
or if it's cold outside but dry because we do get a lot of rain here in Vancouver and I would not want to get caught in the torrential downpour of fall and winter in this. This project inspired me to not be afraid of modifications and also customizations which leads me to one of the big reasons why I love knitting and continue to knit. It's great that there are patterns out there that you can follow, but also as you learn different techniques, you can apply them to whatever pattern you're using or whatever design and alter it exactly how you want it to be. So maybe the modification or customization is something small like a different cast on or just a different cast on method. But in doing that, you are making it your own and you are making it extra unique that way. So that's one thing I really like about knitting and that's what keeps me inspired and keeps it exciting because I can think about different ways to start the project, end the project. I really think it's all the, the finishing techniques that really make a project. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around and making it to this point. I hope you enjoyed a little brief history of my knitting journey so far. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or even just leave me a little hi or hello. Hey, hey there. <laughs> I, I would love to meet you. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot to me to hit like and please do consider subscribing if you'd like to continue following along my knitting journey. Thanks again for watching and until next time, see you in the next one. Bye!